Don has put on his morning sleep aid. <laughs> I'll see you in a little while, Donnie. I love you. You too. Be careful, please. All right. <laughs> I turned off automatic doors yesterday. I wish I could remember to turn it back on. We need a default timer like, you know, just turn it off for the rest of the day versus turn it off, turn it off. You know, like do not disturb on iPhones where you can say tell it to come back on or is that Android? One of the two. So, um, we got home from Phantom of the Opera last night sometime after 11 and then of course, you know, I wanted to work on my video, so it was probably going on one by the time I fell asleep and I still didn't have it out there because I was waiting for it to finish rendering and I never woke back up to slide it over to YouTube. But um, I'm tired this morning. I'm really tired. I mean, I'm tired every morning, but this morning I'm really tired. Wake up, Mom. Wake up. <gasps> Just enjoying uh, the look of uh, daylight over the buildings this morning because come Monday it's not going to be this bright out. You guys have a good day. You, I love you. We've got four hours left in Ready Player One. Kind of hard to stop listening this morning. It was uh, really intense. I've got Mr. Bluebird uh, keeping me company on the ride this morning. Really pretty light when I took that picture. Gray wasn't here for breakfast this morning, so I'm very relieved to come home and see that she's back. I don't know where she was, but it was cold. I guess just sleeping. Either that or after a mouse. Mittens is being Don's nap buddy today. If you want to guess that I fell asleep and took a long nap today, you'd be right. Don too. It's just um, rough the amount of sleep we're not getting getting up at 5.30 in the morning. I need a schedule where we can go to sleep at midnight or 1 o'clock and get up at 8 or 9 in the morning. <laughs> yeah, that's the schedule I need. So I'm headed to pick them up now. Come home. Um, then we've got Taekwondo. And uh, like I said, the boys are off to their dads again this weekend. And um, yeah. I have one of my milk, coffee, and chocolate drinks. And I need more caffeine for the ride. Bad. I really never tire of this view. Especially when it's... Uh, Nice blue sky. Well, I've got the boys in. It's the weekend. Seems like uh, this third quarter is over. And uh, everyone is pretty excited about the grades this time. Yeah, that was an unexpected surprise. We uh, were coming down Main Street. And um, yeah, that was an unexpected surprise. We were coming down Main Street, Fuquay, past uh, Fellowship uh, Bible Church, which is also near the bed and breakfast uh, where the mayor lives. And uh, he and some other trainers were on the street corner getting ready to battle Agron. And they were really good people. They backed out so that Johnny and I could join. And, um, John, you know, Johnny and I and the mayor, we all got in. The mayor's at level 32, but he'd not battled before. So, um... And uh, then we all walked up the hill to Stick Boy and we battled Ray Kuza and some of us got him and some of us didn't. He's pretty hard to get. But uh, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> that really was. That's uh, what Pokemon Go is all about, right? Meet some people in your community and uh, get some exercise in the process. And it's uh, 53 and sunny out there, just a little windy. So it's it wasn't bad being on the street corner. I accidentally transfer it. Okay. Yeah, you don't want to accidentally transfer him back in. Yeah, that's my kid. That's my kid. He, he hears. So while I was organizing around the house this morning, Don was watching Tesla YouTubes in yep. the background. Always and one do. of them was uh, Nikki Gordon Bloomfield of Transport Evolved. Yep. And uh, we watch all of Nikki's videos. Yep. And we're, we're fans. Um, 
today's video that Don was watching. I don't know when it came out, but it's it why, it today. why <laughs> it's time to talk about Tesla Model 3 problems. And um, Nikki mentioned she might get some uh, hate mail, some bad comments about this video because she dared to say something uh, not 100% positive about uh, Tesla. But uh, that won't be coming from me and Don. However, <laughs> I can't say that I went along exactly with everything that Nikki said today. Um, she um, reported that she felt like uh, Tesla owners weren't being honest about problems they were having with their cars. That for, because of their love for Tesla, that they were trying to hide problems that they were having. In particular with the Model 3, but also with the S and the X. And, um, you know, I think that Don and I, ha we can only speak for ourselves, right, have been really honest about yeah. issues that we've encountered with our Model X Ruby since we got her. There have been two main issues in case you missed it along the way. We had to have the uh, three uh, front right side um, sensors replaced because we were having false alerts about objects in front of the car. And uh, that totally fixed the problems we were having. And then we had to have um, the key fobs replaced and reprogrammed because we were having right. troubles with the car, the, the self-presenting door not closing when we walked away and not opening up when we would come. It would just right. intermittently every three weeks or so for a day it wouldn't work. Yeah, um, it was really weird. It was really weird and I don't know why the key fobs fixed the problem, but it did. Um, but, you know, both times uh, we called, we reported the problem to Tesla. We mentioned it in the video. Um, Tesla um, scheduled service and fixed a problem. You know, the, the key fob one baffled them a bit, baffled us a bit too, but they stuck with us and they fixed it. So, you know, we were we were happy. We weren't really inconvenienced because we were. It wasn't an emergency. Like we weren't stranded on the side right. of the road. The car was still drivable. It was just an annoyance, and uh, we were given a Tesla loaner when we had the service. So all of that was, you know, our our service experience was good. So right. at any point, I think that we have been honest, but. Every time I say something about a problem with Ruby, whether it's a, you know, hey, the car just rebooted or it's more serious like when we needed the front sensors replaced, I am concerned about the um, trolls out there that are looking for Tesla to do things, you know, Tesla to fail, yeah, that kind of thing. The trolls are, you know, you got your Tesla fans who, who basically, you know, um, react to anything negative. And then you have the other people who pile it on on anything next. So, you know, it's it's funny. There's it, there's you can't have an objective, rational discussion. It's you're, you either have flamethrowers this way or or um, ice cubes that way. So it's yeah, that's what we've noticed. Um, right. I think that's 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 fair. Yeah, we're trying to stay in the middle. We have a problem. We tell you, we get it fixed. You know, we report on what it was. Um, Right, and one of the points that I guess the point that cut the most, uh, I have to say, and you know, I would love to sit here and uh, disagree with her, but I'm going to agree with her. She said that basically any budget Chevrolet, Hyundai, Toyota, Honda would have never left the factory with some of the problems uh, in it that uh, Tesla does, and um, I. I guess that that could be true. I mean, that is a true statement. Uh, I'm not qualifying it, and but I would say the the problem that we had that should have probably never left the Tesla factory. You know, they replaced that piece of glass seal uh, with the seal. Right, you know, we instantly. did have that too on the and, Falcon Wing door. Uh, the seal didn't look pretty, and that ended up to our surprise right. being a full glass replacement. You're right, and uh, you know, I, I sort of scratched my head. Why did that? Why did that um, that happen? And um, I I call the uh, RX. I think the paddle gaps are acceptable, uh, but I guess uh, uh, the panel gaps are either perfect or egregious, and you can't have acceptable panel gaps. So I don't know. I don't consider the panel gaps to be egregious, and I I guess others don't consider them to be uh, uh, perfect. <laughs> So, uh, you know, I don't know how you do that, but I think our panel gaps are fine. Our, our Falcon Wing doors, and I want to stress this, we open the, we use our Falcon Wing doors. This is not a, All day, the time. a daily commuter where, you know, I get in the car and go to the office 
and uh, I don't open the falcon wing doors. No, no. Marianne opens the falcon wing doors. Uh, At least the one on the driver's side. side. No, right. the passenger side. Passenger, the passenger side. side all the time. It's oh, uh, four to eight times a day. Yeah, I mean, every think day. about it. The days we go to Taekwondo or whatever, I mean, when the both boys are in the car, That's it's right. getting opened a lot. The driver's side pass, uh, a Falcon Wing door is probably only opened uh, a third as often as the passenger, but this passenger side, it gets a workout every day yeah well don had just as much concerns when i got my honda odyssey back in 2006 right, that the... those sliding doors were going to malfunction he was really worried about them right so it's not a tesla thing All right but um, i'm just i'm just giving you an example sure. of, of the the things that you know that tesla has made better uh, uh the early falcon wing doors had problems uh i don't know if the owners were the ones that caused Tesla to fix it, but nonetheless, they, they've been fixed. What I'm really trying to say is in the case of uh, the, the glass, the seal on the glass door, Tesla a service has stepped up without hesitation and fixed everything that we've reported to them. And um, we, uh, Marion has that yellow wing around right. the edge. And we, we have the yellow line on the outer edges of the center console screen now. And I have full confidence that Tesla will take care right, of it. We, we've, I've simply just not chosen to ask them to take right, care of it We're going to wait a little while um, uh, to see if it gets worse. I mean, we're going to have it replaced absolutely before the warranty period, but we've got some time. And I guess, you know, I'm hoping that whatever the that problem is, because uh, again, reading online, some people have it replaced and the problem comes back. So I'm thinking that you know Tesla is gonna uh, research that and figure out what's causing that problem. And so you know, replacing it this time, and then in three months maybe we'd have to replace it again. I don't want to do that. So we're just sitting, chilling because it it doesn't affect the operation. It's a cosmetic thing. Uh, at least at this point, it hasn't affected the operation. So um, I guess what I'm saying is Tesla has stepped up everything that we have reported. But her point that, you know, uh, cars are leaving the factory and they, uh, they probably aren't up to snuff. But I would stress one other thing that's different between t Tesla and every other car maker that she missed. To my knowledge... No other car maker has ever improved the car after delivery. In other words, when you buy your BMW, that's your BMW, all of a sudden, it's not going to have a better performance. It's not going to get uh, automatic windshield wipers. wipers. Or... <laughs> nothing is going to be done to that car after delivery. It's, it's, it is what it is, and it's never going to get any better. It's as good when you take delivery of your other manufacturer's car, the day you take delivery is its best day. Every day after that, it's going to go downhill. You know what? With Tesla, you take delivery of your Tesla, and it starts getting better. Oh, the service people replaced the seal on the on the Falcon Wing door. Oh, my goodness. We've got better traffic aware cruise control. Oh, the autopilot's gotten better. Oh, we've got uh, uh, intermittent windshield wipers. We get features, and it's getting better and better, and no other car. And she somehow forgot that little detail, that the things that Tesla is doing, uh, they may not, they're never done. This car is constantly going to be improving. And, you know, congrats to Tesla for doing that. Nobody else, you know, you've, Mercedes <laughs> is not going to give you anything new on your car. I mean, they'll they'll fix the seal on the w window just as quick as Tesla will. If there is a problem, and maybe there won't ever be a problem, but the point is, they're they're never gonna uh, do a um, uh, Manhattan steam roller Christmas show with the windows and the popping wing doors flapping either. <laughs> they're never going to do that either. So um, you know, it's each his own. I'm just saying that Tesla has certain advantages, and they're thinking outside the box and they're doing it a different way. And you know, if you want a traditional car, you know, go down to your local. Nissan dealer, uh, uh, I understand the, the number one comment on the new Nissan Leaf is that it's you can't even tell it's an electric car. It drives like a gas car. It behaves like a gas car. You know, it's just the most plain car. It, un, it cannot be differentiated. And so, you know, if that's what you want, you go buy that. <laughs> but I don't want that. Yeah, I'm just going to add one more thing here, too, that I thought of while you were 
expressing your opinion was that um you know coming of uh, defects coming out of the factory paint panel gaps uh whatever else the uh, trim pieces that's one thing and then the software continual improvement you know is another is another thing so i think uh, owners are totally with the program of i know i'm gonna get software updates and if i'm missing you know model three when it came out i think you know it was pretty well known that the software had some room for growth <laughs> I'm gonna phrase that nicely. Oh yeah, um, and, it's and, and, and it is growing, and it has improved, and it's continuing improved. And I think folks are reasonably patient with that. And I'm gonna predict five years from now, when they're still shipping Model Threes, uh, that the software won't be done. That sometime after delivery, you're gonna get an update to your software. Even so, that it's never done. Software is never done. Yeah, but well, we now can... you don't have to worry. BMW says software is done, and Mercedes says the software is done. These people, they absolutely tell you their software is done. That's why you have Dieselgate software. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> yeah. So um, we'll continue to report honestly, honestly. on things that uh, are both good right. and, and wrong with Ruby as they happen. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, I think we can be um, fair, even though we are a Tesla fanboy um, and fangirl. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it is a confirmation bias. I totally get it. You pay that kind of money for a car. You're not probably going to walk around uh, bad-mouthing the car. And I think that that same sentiment is true if you buy a BMW, a Mercedes, or anything else. Uh, oh, well, an expensive car. I don't know if you're ever going to find uh, a BMW uh, person who's going to tell you, you know, this is the worst car I, uh, I ever bought. I don't think anybody's... Nope, that's just human nature. It's got nothing to do with Tesla. Uh, uh, is Tesla... I, I guess what I'm just simply trying to say is I think uh, you have to have a slightly different mindset with Tesla. And maybe someday, you know, and actually maybe let me rephrase that. You have to have a different mindset from Tesla, and I'm so happy it's that way. I don't want my car to be like the other people. I don't want my Tesla to be anything like anybody else's car. I don't want it to be a Camry. I don't want my electric car to drive just like a gasoline car. So in continuing our Tesla discussion, Don and I wondered if uh, the API for Tesla was uh, being utilized by Tesla Phi for Model 3. And I think we have our answer right here. And the answer is yes. Apparently there is at least one Model 3 customer utilizing Tesla Phi. We were looking at uh, the latest software levels for all the cars in the Tesla Phi uh, fleet. We're here at 2018.6.1 where one of these uh, one of these cars yeah, the uh, this this chart is showing on each day how many people got that update. So basically, a lot of people have been getting this um, uh, EF uh, AC type. And tomorrow's update. the tenth, and we got it overnight. So um, we were basically in one of these two yeah, days we were, when we right, got it. I agree. A week it, ago, it, for it us. shows it when we got it. it Testify keeps track of all the software updates and when you got it. This is on our car. So we got it on 3.3. Three. Uh, that's when we when we got it. So, uh, you know, Testify really does expose, if you like the bits and the bytes, uh, Testify really does, uh, uh, shows a lot of things. Um, and uh, it talks about the percentage of the fleet that has what, what, uh, EF, so 86% of the 1,419 users of Tesla Fi, 86% of those, or actually 87%, are at this uh, EFAC level. Uh, the distribution of the other possible levels, there, there's very low digits. There's one at 3%, uh, and there's one at 2.6%. So the bulk of the uh, fleet, of, this is both includes S's and X's and Model 3's, are up at this EFAC level. So Teslafy continues to break down the uh, software releases, and uh, Don also noticed that. Uh... Yeah, the Autopilot 2.5 cars. In other words, uh, even uh, Model 
X and S's made after a certain date are uh, now come with the Autopilot 2.5. Uh, our car is just an Autopilot 2. Uh, so there's 577 of the cars are Autopilot 2. But notice that in the Autopilot 2, 92% uh, of the cars are at the EFAC level. And if you look at the Autopilot uh, 2.5 cars, there's 284, about just under half the number of cars. And uh, most of those are at the EFAC level also. And there's really no newer soft, uh, there's, you know, one software level different between the cars. There's a 696 level versus a, a, a 9EA level. So you can keep track of that stuff. And of course it shows the Autopilot 1 cars, 443 are Autopilot 1 cars. And again, these are just the cars that have purchased Tesla 5. This That's is right. not all the cars in the Tesla fleet, but it's all the cars in Tesla 5's fleet. Right. I guess the thing I'd like to say here, um, I would say that, yeah, you know, I'm just, this is a gut telling me, you know, they've been talking about, Elon's been saying that they're going to come out with a major autopilot upgrade here soon. Uh, he's been promising it since uh, last year, uh, late last year. Uh, I think the, with all the cars converging on one software level, because I've looked at this before and it's been, you know, there's always been the one somewhat major uh, percentage of the fleet at a particular software level but you know the others being in in single digits or low single digits uh, is is different uh, they normally you would see cars with uh, 15 20 percent of the cars at this level and you know uh, the 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 common consensus level you know 65 percent of the cars would be at that level so the consensus level has gone up and all the other uh, plurality uh, the, has gone down. So uh, maybe that means that they're getting them up to a level and then we're, they're going to ship, drop a, 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 a update on autopilot. You know, got my fingers crossed. Hey buddy, how you doing? Pretty good. It's really bright. Yeah. We're headed into Taekwondo now. I traveled 92 miles today. Ruby says I have 125 to go, and it's a uh, slightly crisp 42 out there. Well, I'm home from Taekwondo, and that was a rough class, let me tell you. But we're starting the weekend. Here's Donnie's salad, and... Mmm! My beer. Well, if you got to share it with somebody. <laughs> I love you. Baby. I love you.